Today we're going to take this here machine and use it to create scribbles on canvas, aka art. And it makes stuff that looks like this. And this. Sure, you could tape a paintbrush to a dog's tail and probably obtain better results. And why not try it? See what happens. Far be it from me to suggest what art is and what isn't. Oh, wait a minute. Because I don't know. But I know this, you gotta walk before you can run. And there's probably some more hiding in there. But before we start running, we got to gesso up all these boards. So satisfying. Well, my fake gesso finally dried up. Using some house paint to kind of get the job done. I kind of like this one as is. I don't know if I want to do anything else to it. Magnificent. It is a Rothko. So I found a tub that was almost all dried out, added some rainwater to it, and that'll probably do nicely. This one is kind of interesting. It's got some uh, Sharpie marks on it. I like that. I don't know if I like it all mixed in together, so I'm going to probably paint over this too, so sorry. That's kind of cool down here. I think that's what I was going after. Some of this is kind of interesting though. Those uh, ink tracks tend to bleed when the, when the water hits it. I'm not completely against it. Some of those little scritch scratch marks and the overlaying I do kind of like. It's just these, these big fat sharpie marks. They look cool on their own, but mixed in with that I am not really liking that a whole lot. So, I mean, really what I got to do is make a robot to do the gesso work for me because that's that's actual work. Also, I haven't run this robot in a couple, three years and uh, she ain't moving. So I'm going to have to spend a bunch of time slogging through old code, ridding, <laughs> ridding in uh, basic, not even visual basic, just basic. Doesn't get any more basic than that. Just trying to trigger the sensors, there's uh, oh, there we go. I got her up on the jacks here so we can just run without running off the table. Um, she wouldn't start up before, don't know why. Uploaded a different program and uh, seems to be A-OK. -okay. Uh, however, over on this side of the room we've got a bunch of canvas that's still wet. All that house paint's got to flash off of there. Probably take a couple of days, so we'll revisit that in a bit. In the meantime, we got plenty of work to do over here. And not only that, but before I took a multi-year break from this, I had purchased some, no, that's not it. Purchased all the makings for a, a new, better robot. Uh, using an Arduino. I mean basically on the next build too is I want the stylus to be in the center of the wheels of the chassis uh, instead of being a tail dragger like this guy. Um, this ha it's, it's uh, you know it works but you're constantly backing into things with it. I got slightly beefier tires well, with actual tires, too. This one came with uh, rubber bands. That doesn't work too good. And plenty of Legos to prototype different ideas. Super glue all the joints up so it won't come apart. As long as you don't torque on it too hard, it lasts pretty good. This is a servo bolted onto this guy with some gears welded onto the axle. And I don't remember exactly what this thing did. I believe this was a kind of a tool changer. We could rotate different tools out of it. Maybe on the next go around. Yeah, so problem number one is that this little guy was programmed in BASIC on a, you know, using software that's running on a Windows 7 machine, believe it or not. This is just vintage, gigantic laptop, 17-inch screen running, you know, 
I think 16 gigs of RAM. So it's not, or no, nah, this is probably eight. Uh, back from 2012. So this is olden times. In fact, in my notes here, I see this is, uh, I mean, I've got all these different programs over the course of my experimentation. This one says something, this is 2010, 27, 2013. This is a variation of PaintBot 2. Designed for watercolor brush, designed to do less turns and more jaggy stuff and attempt to fill in the edges and show some emotion. I keep seeing that comment. I think I got to the point where I was like, you know, show some emotion, get angry here. You, you beast. I mean, I think maybe that's where the emotion comes from. It's in the code. The machine is angry. So I'm trying to track down a program where um, hopefully I left a comment I did not do a good job commenting my code here. Most of the time, I, you don't have to if you name things, you know, semantically correct, uh, even if the name is really long, uh, like, uh, you know, IR detect left. That's a lot better name than IRDL. Not that anybody would ever code like that. Never seen it before. Oh, perchance I, I have found it. This does a very nice messy concentrated circle thing. 6-5-2014, so darn near six years ago to the month. Yeah, well, after a couple hours at the keyboard yesterday, I got the uh, diagnostic app sort of rewritten and cleaned up so I could see what the heck is going on. Well, the moment has arrived. We've got her loaded with a fresh Pentel made in Japan. Let's stop yakking and get to tracking. Uh-oh. Something's terribly wrong. <laughs> what is it doing? What on earth is it doing? Well, she's gone a little haywire. I think we better pull the plug and uh, get her back up on the bench. Oh my goodness! Okay, what that was was the unwinding mechanism because uh, after such and such number, uh, as the as the counter is running, it's gonna do the hokey pokey to try to unwind this beast. Oh. <laughs> this is completely unexpected. Well, while it's all very interesting, uh, that's not exactly what I ordered, so... Back up to the bench you go. Oh, I found my bug all right. If modulo 23 <laughs> I forgot equals zero, so basically that was always true. Well, I told you I tried to give this thing some emotion, so our function, uh, if uh, the global universal counter thing hits, let's say, 13, get angry. Higher numbers equal higher anger level. No. Take that back. Lower numbers equal higher anger level. So, like, what? Global counter uh, mod one, that'd be every single click, this thing would ha throw a tantrum. So I've got 13. Oh, I think we should probably choose something, a higher prime number so it doesn't get too angry. I don't know. This is the exciting part of choosing emotions for the device. I also mess with the, uh, the chirp sounds. All right, we're off to the races. A bit of a problem there, backing up. Oh. Bauhaus, man. Yeah, she's pinned up against the wall there.
It's working! Oh no! It's like she doesn't even care. She doesn't see too good peripherally. That's for damn sure. Oh, come on! Oh, stop. Oh, no. It's a tractor pull now. Now we're gonna have to break this up. Oh. Well, clearly the problem is that she can't see in front of her and her peripheral isn't too hot either. She's kind of like my great grandma, bless her heart. I don't know, I think I'm gonna just let this program run for a bit. Maybe for this canvas only. This is the first canvas on this channel. Sometimes she gets worked into the corner there, but she seems to be able to kind of do like a 20 point turn to get out of it. Kind of funny when she fights against the wall like that. You see, when it, when it works, it works great. There's just a couple little bugs. Oh, stop. He's trying to turn left real hard. <laughs> well, they say the singularity is coming. And they say the robots and computers will one day enslave all of us. Hopefully when they come across this, they don't judge me too harshly. They said of this, your painting is both good and original. But the part that is good is not original, and the part that is original is not good. Thanks for watching. Keep the smoke in your op amps. <laughs>